Listening activity number 14. Task 1. You will hear a dialogue between two students. One of them is describing a route on the map. If the person went inside any of the places named on this map, mark that place with a cross. Hello, Mary. Did you go to the university for registration yesterday? Yes. That day was a bit hectic. I was really tired. Why? What happened? Oh, I went to the West Building to register first. Then on the way to the library to apply for my library card, I had to go to the South Building to see my tutor there. After the library, I had to go to the Student Union's office to book a ticket for the Oxford trip next week. Yes, you did a lot of things. Yes, but that wasn't the end of it. I was pretty tired after all that. Anyway, I went to the bar for lunch and I met Cathy there. Cathy? Is that the girl you were talking about before? Yes, she's my old schoolmate. She studies computing at my university. She now lives in the YMCA, very close to the bar. She wanted to show me the computer centre, but it was closed. So she took me to the shopping centre in Ealing Broadway instead. We came back at 6pm. No wonder you were looking so tired. Listening activity number 15. You're going to listen to a talk about children's safety at home. Look at the table below. Listen to the talk and fill in the missing information in the correct column. Over half a million children under five are taken to hospital each year after an accident at home. Tragically, about 200 die. Most of these accidents need never have happened. Think how your adult size home looks through a child's eyes. Think how quickly your child is growing and changing. Out of reach may be much higher than it was not long ago. So think ahead. Their safety is in your hands. Things look different from where children are. They can see lots of things to grab hold of or poke into. Pan handles, the lead on the kettle, a hot drink, or the iron. If they grab something hot, it could burn or scald them. Even a cupful is dangerous. When they're moving around, they don't always look ahead. They don't see. Panes of glass in doors and screens, things left on the floor like toys, or spills in the kitchen, drawers or cupboard doors left open. They can trip and fall over things, fall through panes of glass, or bump into things which stick out. Children like to explore and soon learn to open things. They can find lots of things you thought were hidden away, like in a kitchen cupboard or under the stairs. They can find medicines and household cleaners. All these can harm them. Matches, lighters, knives and other sharp tools. Plastic bags and things they could choke on like peanuts. Children don't know which things are dangerous. For instance, they can't tell the difference between lemonade and terps. As children grow and explore, they see new things they want to reach and play with. They can climb the stairs on their own, but then they don't know how to get down again safely. Climb on a chair to reach a window, then they could fall out of it. Climb inside things, like cupboards and freezers. Reach switches and knobs and turn them on and off. They could be anywhere. If you can't hear them playing, please go and look for them. Keeping a constant eye on them as they move around is very difficult. You can't be everywhere at once, and anyway, it's important for them to learn about the world around them. But you can help keep them safe by planning ahead and making the right arrangements. You can store all medicines and household chemicals out of reach of children. Make sure they're not left lying around. Make it more difficult for them to touch or grab hot things. For instance, turn pan handles away from the front of the cooker. Use a short or curly lead on an electric kettle. Make sure all fires and heaters are guarded. Use barriers on stairs and in doorways until they have learned to move around safely. Fit safety glass at low level. 
Make sure things are not left around on the floor or the stairs. This is safer for you as well as for them. Teach them about safety. Show them how to do things safely, like going up and down the stairs. Tell them about how hot things could hurt them. Listening activity number 16. Look at the picture on the sheet in front of you. This is Kevin's bed sitting room. He is describing his room to his friend. As you listen, draw in the furniture in the right places in the picture. Using a square or a circle to mark in the furniture as described. Just a quick sketch will do. Well, my room is L-shaped. There's a round dining table and four chairs opposite the kitchen door, so I can look out onto the garden when I eat. My record player is in the corner, between the kitchen door and the small window. There are bookcases on both sides of the fireplace, and a rectangular coffee table in front of the fire. My bed is against the long wall, under the large window. I use it as a sofa during the day so there are some big striped cushions on it. Opposite the bed, against the kitchen wall, there's a desk, and between the bed and the desk, there's a large armchair. I like sitting and reading in front of the fire, with my feet up on the coffee table. In the empty space in front of the door, there's an oval carpet on the floor, and the piano's against the wall between the door and my bed. Listening activity number 17. Sally bought a new house a few days ago in, in a small village. She is phoning her friend Richard and inviting him for dinner at the weekend. Sally is giving directions to get to her house. Look at the map. As you listen, take notes and mark Sally's house with a cross. Good morning, 5723490. Good morning, Richard. This is Sally. Hello, Sally. How are you? Fine, thanks. Listen, are you free this weekend? Yes, why? You know, I've just bought a new house in the countryside. Oh, have you? Congratulations. Thank you. I would like to invite you to have dinner with my family this weekend. That's very kind of you. I'd love to. You'd better tell me how to get there. Where is your new house? In Greenwich. How will you be coming? By car, of course. All right. So you'll be coming from Andover. You need to take the road to Grand Town. Take the road? Yeah. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. From Grand Town? Because I'm, I'm writing this down. Uh, Gr Grand Town. That's Gra... That's G-R-A-N-D-T-O-W-N. That's right. Now, you'll approach the village from the north. Coming from the north, uh-huh. The house is about two miles outside the village, by the way. House is two... uh-huh. Mm, so now you get... You, you come into the centre of the village, and you'll arrive at the main square. Come into the centre. On the far side. Yeah, I, I can't get lost there, can I? No, you can't miss it. Mm. Far side of the square, you'll see the town hall, Le Marie. Far side... hang on, far side, see town hall. Right. Yeah. Now... You need to go past the town hall, leaving it on your left. Past, leave it on my left, yeah. And cross the bridge over the river. Bridge over river, okay. Now, the thing I... When you get across the bridge, mm -hmm. there's a junction, but there aren't any signposts. Oh, that's helpful. Well, you know how it is. So, you turn right. I cross the bridge. Hang on, there's a junction, yeah. And then I have to go right at the junction. That's right. You turn right immediately after the bridge. Mm -hmm. And basically, you keep on that road. The road bears round to the left. Oh, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah. First of all, about after half a mile, there's a chateau on your right. Is that your place? <laughs> Afraid not. Couldn't afford it. Chateau on, on the right, yeah? And there's a road going off opposite that, but ignore that road. Mm -hmm. Keep straight on. You keep straight on right. Yeah. Past the chateau. Keep straight on, yes. 
The next thing you come to is a farm at a place called Villac. Farm and then Villac. That's V I L L A C. A C. That's it. Aha.、Uh-huh. And just after that, the valley narrows and the road becomes much closer to the river. Yes. So you run along the river. Aha.、Uh-huh. For a little hundred meters, really. The house is in the next group of buildings. Ah.、Oh. You've got a mill opposite the house.、Oh, sounds beautiful. Well, it's it's got. I think I think you'll like it when you get there. So hang on a minute. The mill is opposite. Yeah, you've got the river on your right. Yeah. You come to the mill, which is on your right, and three. Yes. Three houses on the left, opposite the mill, and the house is the middle one. House is the middle w- one. Okay. Right. So do you think you'll find it? Well, well, with my sense of direction, I'm not sure, but no, it. I think I've got everything down. Fine. I'm sure you will. Dinner will start at six. Do I need to bring something? No, just bring yourself. Okay, I'll be there by six. Goodbye. Listening activity number eighteen. You are going to listen to five conversations between a new information officer and passengers. Look at the timetable and check whether the information officer provides correct information or not by writing T for true and F for false beside each number. Conversation one. Can I help you, madam? Yes. Could I have a second-class return ticket to Nottingham to arrive by ten? That's that's forty-one pounds, please. Here you are. Could you tell me which train I could take? Let me see. It's seven o'clock now, Friday. Yes, you can take the seven thirty train to get there. Thank you very much. Conversation two. Excuse me, sir. Yes, madam. What can I do for you? Could you tell me the time of trains to Nottingham, please? What sort of time do you want to go? You see, I would like to go to Nottingham to visit my daughter. She will meet me at the station at six thirty this Saturday. Which train should I take? Take the sixteen thirty train, and you'll get there at eighteen twenty-four. Is that all right? That's fine. Thanks a lot. Oh, by the way, how much does a weekend return ticket to London cost, please? It costs forty-one pounds. Thank you. Conversation three. Excuse me, sir. Yes, madam. May I help you? Could you tell me which trains I can take if I buy a Saver ticket to Nottingham? Let me see. Oh yes, you can take any train except the seven thirty and the eight thirty morning trains, and any trains after seventeen thirty. Generally speaking, a saver ticket can be used on most trains, except on a few peak hour trains. Here's a timetable; you can check it by yourself. Lovely. That will be very helpful. Conversation four. May I help you, young lady? Yes, I have to get to Nottingham by ten thirty this Saturday morning. Could you tell me which train I should take to get there on time? The eight thirty train will do. I see. Could you tell me which platform the train leaves from? Platform four. Thank you. Conversation five. Can I help you, madam? Yes, I would like to get to Nottingham on Friday by seven o'clock. Which train should I take? The seventeen o five train. How much for a return saver ticket to Nottingham? Twenty pounds, but I'm afraid you can't use a saver ticket on that train. Can't I? How much is standard fare? Forty-one pounds, please. Well, I think I should take standard fare. Here's forty-five. Thanks. Here's your ticket and change. Thank you very much. Unit three, direction and location. 
Listening activity number 19. Look at the graph below. This graph shows the numbers of people who visited London Zoo, Kew Gardens and Regent's Park from 1978 to 1987. Mark in the names London Zoo, Kew Gardens and Regent's Park on the appropriate lines on the graph. Now listen carefully. The graph shows the numbers of visitors to London Zoo, Kew Gardens and Regent's Park from 1978 to 1987. Apart from the period from 1980 to 1983, London Zoo has been the most popular attraction. In 1978, almost 60,000 people visited the zoo. Although this number decreased slowly during the next three years, it then rose gradually until 1985. In this year, a children's zoo is opened, resulting in a sharp rise from 70,000 to 95,000 within one year. In contrast, in 1979 to 1981, the number of visitors to Kew Gardens increased after a restaurant had been opened in 1979 from 48,000 to 64,000, but then it dropped steadily to approximately 45,000 in 1986. The least popular attraction was Regent's Park, with only 26,000 visitors in 1978. This number rose only slightly in 1981. But in 1983, boating was introduced on the lake, and the number of visitors rose quite suddenly, from almost 30,000 to 40,000 within one year. Unfortunately, however, the number levelled off in 1984 and has remained steady since then. Listening activity number 20. Look at the graph below. This one shows the numbers of visitors to exhibition centre, museum and art gallery. Mark in the names exhibition centre, museum and art gallery on the appropriate lines on the graph. Exhibition centre is the most popular attraction. In 1978, almost 40,000 people visited the exhibition centre although this number dropped slowly during the next five years. In 1983, the number of visitors was a little over 35,000. It then increased suddenly until 1984. In this year, a restaurant was opened, resulting in a sharp rise from 37,000 to almost 50,000 within two years. The number of visitors to the museum was about 25,000, this was better than the number to the art gallery, which was only 15,000 in 1978. It then decreased steadily until 1982. The number was the same as the number of visitors to the art gallery. That was about 18,000. In 1983, a building extension was open and the number of visitors to the museum began to level off at 17,000 visitors each year. The least popular attraction was the art gallery. In 1979, the number dropped slowly from 15,000 to less than 12,000. But in 1980, free admission was carried out, so the number of visitors increased suddenly from 12,000 to 25,000. It then levelled off since then. There is a slight rise every year. <laughs>